Wes. And today, we're continuing our streak on macro photography. We're looking at the Astrohori 85mm 2.8 tilt lens for Sony E-mount. So here's a unique lens, as are most of Astrohori's lenses. We have a small, very compact macro lens. This is probably about half the girth of, say, the Laowa 90mm. And it's even smaller than the Sony 90, which we're recording with right now, quite a bit smaller. And even while being smaller, it has some extra features. It's a tilt lens, and we'll talk more about that later. As always, let's start with the build quality as the first of our categories. As you can see here, we have an all metal construction. No surprises, that's how Astrohori's other lenses are. And that's how most Chinese third-party lenses are. It's just solid as a rock. This thing feels just Mm, phenomenal in the hand, the tilt mechanism, oh, so smooth. You can move it with your hand, or you can use this little dial here. But if we turn around to the back, you'll see here, we do not have an O-ring. There is no weather sealing in this lens. There is doubly no weather sealing in this lens because of this tilt mechanism. You do not want to use this in the rain. It's going to get stuff in it. The lens cap is ultra generic. This is one that we see on the very cheapest of lenses. It's, I would have liked to see something a little bit less generic because Astrohori is making some cool stuff now. I would like them to have their own style lens cap. What do I mean by that? Well, Laowa, over here we have their 58 mil Dreamer lens. They have their own lens cap design. It's somewhat distinctive. I don't know if it's any better. It's a little bit bigger than it needs to be, actually. It's a nice, solid contact lens cap. This one here is just the most generic one that can be made. And also, although there appears to be like some mounting points for it, this lens did not come with a lens hood, which is unfortunate. Now, a lot of people wouldn't use lens hoods with macro photography because it might get in the way of getting closer, but I want to have a lens hood. I want to have the option of having that. So that's kind of unfortunate. So overall, I'm gonna give this build quality a 7.5 out of, out of 10. Yeah, it's tough as nails, but this is not going to resist water and dust ingress very well, and with a cheap lens cap, and we're missing a lens hood. Next up is handling and usability. This one's a bit of a mixed bag as well. Number one, it is incredibly compact. It's very compact for a 90 mil or 85 mil class macro lens. That's great but it is very heavy. Like you, you feel the weight of this and most of the weight is concentrated towards the front because this whole back section has to be kind of empty to uh, facilitate this shift capability. The aperture ring is out in the front and it's actually raised, which is a little bit weird and it's not clicked, but it has very positive feedback, very well damp and feels great. And the focus element also feels fantastic. That all feels wonderful. I said before, the tilt mechanism also very well dampened, feels fantastic. I've had this lens for just way too long now. And so even though I've used it quite a bit, it has not loosened up, feels great. But, 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 I would rather have a clicked aperture ring on a macro lens because I'm not, probably not doing video with this. And also having the aperture out front is annoying, but that's, that's an unfortunate element of this particular lens design. The aperture is just out at the front. Which means, however, because it's raised, because it's at the front, you're gonna bump that aperture ring all the time when you're focusing. Thankfully, it's very well dampened, so when you do bump it, it doesn't just spin all the way around <laughs> like some lenses do. And although this is knurled into the metal, it's also very smooth, so you've gotta grip it pretty tight to get that going there. The biggest issue that I have with this lens is once you mount it on a camera, and admittedly, this is common to tilt lenses, now you can rotate this so that it tilts in whatever direction you want, but most of the time I'm tilting vertically like this, which puts either the lock switch for the tilt or the tilt mechanism, probably the lock switch because you want the tilt mechanism where you can reach it, just gouges right into your fingers there. This is not convenient at all. <laughs> that being said, you're probably gonna be using this on a tripod more often than not when you're using the tilt mechanism. But overall, it is, even when you get it out of the way, this giant square box at the back there, tilting sideways, but now it's coming out, anyway. It is not a comfortable lens to use on a camera. <laughs> and so overall, I'm gonna give this a handling and usability of 6.5 out of 10. 
This is not a lens that is designed to be, to feel great in the hand. <laughs> Image quality. This is one where we could expect it to go either way. The past Astrohor lens, also super bizarre. We have their 50 mil tilt lens. And this tilts in like a circular fashion, which is crazy, super tiny, but super cheap lens. The image quality was phenomenal. I don't know why. It was sharper than the Sony 55 1.8, the Sony Zeiss in a lot of apertures in the center of the frame, which is now I know that that 55 is no longer one of the sharpest lenses anymore, but this lens is dirt cheap. It should not be able to do that. <laughs> How did this one go? Well, it is not as sharp as their 50, which is disappointing because you want a macro lens to be as sharp as possible. And I have to get onto a bit of a side trail here. This lens is a pre-production lens, only slightly so. And when your subject is backlit, there are some issues in the back of the lens here. There is too much reflectivity in the back parts of the lens. Now they have added extra anti-reflective coating to the production version of this lens. So this issue won't be as bad for someone actually getting the lens now, but I like to shoot backlit. Even when I'm not like in a sunset or something, I like to have like an edge light on my subject, even doing macro work. And when you do that with this particular lens, sharpness is greatly reduced because it causes ghosting in the image. Somewhat fixed in the production version of this, thankfully, but I have to rate the one that I have here. Now, but overall sharpness in controlled lighting, not backlit, is actually fantastic, even wide out. Let's have a look at this moth. Disgusting to some people. I think moths are super cute. But when you get too close, yeah, it's a little bit weird. But it is very sharp. Again, for a lens of this price range, shocking. Astrohori, formerly Rockstar, doing a bang up job here of getting lenses to be sharp. Not quite as sharp as the Sony 90mm macro, but that is a very sharp lens. But for its price class, just fantastic. So if they have that backlighting issue fully fixed for the production version, that's great. But for the one that I have, I have to give it a seven out of 10. If the backlighting issue were fixed on this, it would probably be an eight, maybe an 8.5. If you wanna see more or larger image samples, check out the link down in the description below. I've got lots going on on my website there. Image character. That's where we wanna you know, get things done with this lens. That's what we expect from a bizarre lens design like this. How does it do? Well, overall positive, but nothing crazy, not perfect. The bokeh starts out very smooth, just very light soap bubbling, which is actually my preference. I like to have just a little bit of definition on the edge. Everyone has their own preference, but for me, very nice, I like it. But at the same time, it stays very smooth in the background, doesn't get nervous. When you have just a little more soap bubbling than that, then things tend to get very nervous or swirly in the background, doesn't do that. We have only very slight cat's eyeing, which surprises me because this lens is so small. I'm not really sure how they managed to do that. Generally, if you make a lens more compact, you get more cat's eye around the edges, you get it closer to the center. So quite smooth, quite pleasing. Now, obviously this lens has an additional trick up its sleeve. It's a tilt lens. While the Astrohori Rockstar 50 mil, you could tilt that and just get some wild effects on that. Like it would tilt hard. This one, the tilt isn't quite so extreme. It's actually much more subtle. Now, yes, it is noticeable, but again, <laughs> the 50 could go way out, whereas this one is a much more normal level of tilt going on here. So you're not gonna go crazy with it, but still gives it a leg up on the competition and being able to create images with more interesting character. So I'm gonna give that an 8.5 out of 10 for image character. 
not perfect in any way, but also very versatile and not distracting. Moving on to autofocus. This lens doesn't have it, it's a manual focus lens. But not only that, it has no communication chip or contacts on it. So I would give actually a few points if it had that. We have so many manual focuses out for E-mount now, I wish some of them would start differentiating, them, differentiating themselves, especially premium lenses like this Laowa Macro, which is a lot more expensive than the Astro Hori. But it would be nice to have those automated focus assist tools where as soon as you focus, it punches into your focus box and you can choose whether or not to turn that on. But they're super useful. But as it stands, this lens is sharp enough to be quite useful with focus peaking. The best way to use focus peaking is to turn it down to the lowest setting, which only works with very sharp lenses. At 2.8, not perfect. As soon as you stop it down a little bit, it is phenomenally sharp and focus peaking works fantastically well. Overall, I do have to give this a zero out of 10. However, there are separate rating scores for manual focus versus autofocus lenses. So let's say you're cross shopping this to the Sony 50mm macro, which has autofocus, or even maybe the Sony 90mm macro, which is a lot more money, also has autofocus. You need to be able to compare those scores. Speaking of comparing, let's move on to value, our last category. That's where we expect Astro Hori to do great, and does it? Yes, it does. This is the cheapest high quality macro lens you can get on E-mount is $330. And it has some additional tricks up its sleeve. Honestly, you can do professional work with this. If you want to take quality macro photos with an E-mount camera, this is the cheapest level of entry for that. 330 bucks. This Laowa lens, it is $500. It does have higher image quality, but it costs a lot more money and you don't get autofocus. Still, great lens, but this one will get the job done for a lot less money. What else can we compare it to? Well, the Samyang 102.8, that's pretty cheap at $500. It's not quite as good as the Laowa though. There is a Tokina 102.8, much larger lens. Again, I don't think it has as high image quality as this. It's kind of an older design. Then the cheapest autofocus one you can get, you've got the Sigma 72.8 at $560. It's still a lot more money than this. And then you have the Sony 90 for 1100, which I expect to be replaced pretty soon with a G Master, or rather added to. So overall, this has an obvious 10 out of 10 for value. It's, it just is what it is. This is the best bang for your buck for macro on E-mount. It's fantastic. So what's our total score? That is the 39.5 out of 50, or 79% on the manual lens scale. It's not that high up there. That's kind of what you get when you have a lens that is the cheapest one that you can get in its class. It's not the best lens, but it's probably the best choice for a lot of people right now. On the absolute scale against all the lenses, it's 65.8. Let's see where that lands us here. Yeah, it's a little ways down the chart there. Let me know what you think about this lens in the comments and I'll get back to you. If you want to pick one up, I've got links down in the description below where you can do that and help support this channel and feed my fat cats that are currently taking a nap. I need to find one of them. So until next time, let's go take some interesting photos.